I swear there was a pop out. Okay. That's good. Um, next up, we have the tweet. Is it really a review if I'm looking at them for the first time? Wouldn't that just be a view? I think I should have called it a view. Yeah, we'll call it the the set view. That'll be that. Uh, that can go away. This can pop up. Now, there are a ton of cards in here, so even though I have not coordinated with anyone and I don't have help, I'm just going to go to it. It is fine. This is not what I wanted. Although cards is what I wanted. Hello, Hydrate. Okay, so I'm going to set up... Um, we want unowned, non-premium omens of the past. Yeah, both owned and unowned. That, that should do. Okay, I think that gives me everything. I hope it does. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna launch into this. We have a, an uncommon in fire, fire main cub. He's, I, I feel like I'm saying the same things again and again. Uh huh. So, I'm gonna deal one damage to an enemy unit. Well, that's neat. Um, that's, like, it's not tied to his power or anything, so he can't ever get buffed. It's always just, like, 1 1 1. So he's here to kill Oni Ronin. Why is this an uncommon? Holy crap. Because he's an elemental beast? He's a cat with like a, a hairdo? Is that it? Like, if you look at Forge Wolf, for instance, this is essentially the same card, just a plain old beast, correctly placed at common, and deals one to the en enemy player. Like, I don't think the game would break in half if you combined these two cards into a single card at Uncommon that did the... Th like, Fireman Cub was the perfect opportunity to show the progression of, like, common to uncommon, how the versatility of a card can improve, like, subtly increasing its power without... I don't know. That's... It's really weird that this is Uncommon. That's... That's really... It. It's also bad. Uh, kind of like Forge Wolf. Also super marginal. Fire has a ton of really good one cost units, so this is neither neither of these cards is winning any uh winning in any awards for that. It's also weird that Forge Wolf appears in this setup at all. I've heard about this. Um Forge Wolf and Cloud Skate, Cloud Snake. So let me dip into Primal for a sec. Where's Primal? There it is. Yeah, Cloud Snake Hatchling both appear in Omens of the Past boosters. I don't know why. I've been told that they, they strictly speaking, belong to set 0 rather than set 1 or 2, so they will always appear in packs, which is really, like, that's weird. But yeah. The other thing is that Forge Wolf can at least enable Spark. Like, holy crap. Poor Fireman Cub. Anyway, done talking about that. Next up is Hidden Shiv, uh, where we get to start talking about warp. Now, where is where is the warp tool tip? Oh, I went through these too fast. Mm, no, that's Mentor. Pr did I know about premium cards? I did not. Ah, here we go. Warp. You can see cards with warp when they are on top of your deck, and you can play them as if they were in your hand. So it's a subtle card advantage mechanic. Most of the time, they say, like, play this draw a card on them effectively because you you get them earlier than you otherwise would before you you have drawn them. But it is it is a little more subtle than that and a little less raw in terms of its power. So, uh, yeah. Keep that in mind. Cheap warp cards are really great. Oh, it also is worth mentioning that this is not Magic the Gathering. It isn't. Y your opponent cannot see that there is a warp card on top of your deck. This is very important. You can see the warp card. Your opponent cannot. So. 
With that said, hidden shiv is really marginal. Uh, this is about appropriate for the complexity of an uncommon, you know, like a cheap warp plus. Maybe it could be really cool if you, like, work right onto it, I guess, but I think this is just a bad version of Ornate Katana, which we already have and always draws a card and is really, really good. <laughs> like, Ornate Katana is fine on its own. Warp needs, like, stuff to happen to make it good. Oh, right, and it has, like, Hidden Shift has the drawback of, like, <laughs> possibly being drawn in your opening hand. <laughs> Or, like, it's on top of your deck when there are no creatures in it. Anyway, moving on. Gnome, if you want to hop in uh, to the Discord, I have a I have a channel open, I think. Let me double-check that. That would probably be a better way to, to yak about it. Okay, he's going to join me in a sec. That'll be great. Uh, I'm going to talk about On the Hunt next. Correctly placed at rare for how weird it is. One power, one fire... Put a guy with charge on top of your deck. Hello. I should probably launch hey. the game so I can keep track of this without the delay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I kind of did have... this yesterday when I streamed me opening. Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw you in... Packs. Right. <laughs> I figured I didn't want to open packs because they possibly had garbage in them, and I think they're going to fix that, but I don't know. So... I'm going to delay opening my packs for a long time. Also, this goes through, like, all of the cards and not just, like, the things I'm lucky enough to open. So I'll cover all the legendaries and stuff. Um, but anyway, on the hunt, seems kind of trash. Uh, like, the scenario where you play this on one and play the Hellhound on two is kind of dominating. But, <laughs> like, Fire already has a lot of explosive starts and things like Oni Ronin and um, Pyro Knight are already good late game, even like Oni Ronin, yeah. Oni Ronin is like sort of bad later on but he at least adds something to the board the turn I, this, you play him. This is the benefit of being a spell, this is the yeah. detriment of being three total mana and two cards because you are basically obliterating the top card of your deck by right. putting a, a, a dog. It is. On you're top you're paying, it. you're paying two cards for a, a four four charge, which like, that's not the worst, you know. Because if, if you think about um, what's the the charge helmet, like that thing, um, yeah, they, put that on a on like a three cry. four. So that's... I think this could be most interesting in some kind of Praxis deck that is also playing uh, what's it called? Elysian Wayfinder, like the 5 one 3 3 gives a top oh, unit of give, a deck give echo. Top unit echo. <laughs> so you have two 4-4 four, four charges. I have a, I have a different thing in mind like for this. this. Yeah, I have it. We'll, we'll talk about it when it happens. It's another Omens of the Past card. Th this will be great. Don't worry about it. Mm, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll be yeah, great. So we'll, we'll return to On the Hunt. It has combo potential is what I'm saying. Um, Pummel is next. Which yeah, uh, has an illustration that I like a lot. It's just an angry man gradually punching another man. <laughs> it's very, very slowly. Punching. Yeah, like there's uh, this no. Card's okay. This card's important because this is this card features a prominently featured stolen mechanic from Magic: The Gathering. Oh, buff while attacking. Oh, you uh, mean Scry? Scry one. Oops. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Maybe it. <laughs> Give it a check creature plus two that. plus two, Scry one. Yeah. The Scry one is basically good. Like, Scry yeah. is a good mechanic. Um, I'm not sad that they stole it. They stole enough other stuff from Magic the Gathering. Yeah, also, just... what is the deal with this tiny dude in the background? Oh, man, can I add a screen region? Uh, the little the little bear hat person? That's definitely, like, something the artist, like, added in, like, late into the illustration. Like, yeah, they're, gonna let, they're not going to let me have Hold this. Hold on, I am, I am highlighting this man. This is, this is way too good. I can't let this slide. <laughs> uh, okay. But while you're setting that up, I'll talk about uh, what, why I think the scry thing is interesting. Um, the game so far has had limited ways of uh, interacting with, the, like, the card selection. There's been some ways, especially in, like, blue, where you can do things like put cards on top, or, like, there's, like, a mini brainstorm card that every combo deck uses. <laughs> um, 
This is the new yes, art for Pummel, by the way. New Pummel art. <laughs> so, uh, Sprite goes a long way to add consistency and stuff. It's just really awkward that it's word for word the same as Scry 1, but I don't think they can keyword it because then they might get in trouble. Yeah, I mean, they're already... Just by the, the nature of their game, they're already in trouble yeah, like for a lot of things. Uh, but because, you know, they're pros who are kind of friendly with, with whoever, and they they're, to get away with it there, they're you know? trying to tread more on Hearthstone's business model than Magic, so that's that's also how they're, they're staying true. out of it. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, as far as the, the function of the card itself, or its power or whatever... Um, this is fine, honestly. Like a lot of like, you want yeah. to be, you you always kind of want to cast. Uh, what's it? Hour of Giant Growth. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> finest Hour. You you finest always hour. want to cast Finest Hour on your attacking creature so that you you can get the extra damage on your opponent on like a, a trample unit or deal extra damage to them. Like, or like turn it, uh, it's trade, it's secondary it and. Yeah, its secondary and far worse purpose is saving a, a creature. And so what yeah, we're, we're saying here is that... On that defense, whereas yeah. this is like, it lets you use it in the best way possible yeah. while also giving you the scry one. Moreover, it's it's the same like speed and cost in both power and influence as Torch. So you can kind of... You can rep <laughs> multiple things, and that's good. I Squeeze multiple more burn spells into your deck. Although I yeah. don't know if this if pummel. No, I, th I think pummel is is, is just fine. Yeah, pummel is correct. You it's you too card. can be an angry man who is beating up a a Indiana Jones. <laughs> or like a farmer. <laughs> farmer Indiana Jones. Well, a bear man <laughs> with a blank face <laughs> makes an O oh in the background. Oh. <laughs> I can't get it off of this this card. <laughs> Okay, next is Young Gun. It's a Tundra Wolf, so only slightly different. Yeah. I mean, he's fine. This yeah, is also the color of, like, Ornate Katana. Yeah, as far as one mana one ones go, this one is... Like, one mana one one keywords are not generally that impressive. Like, no one's just throwing up any dust over Humbug. But uh, this guy yeah. wears a sword pretty well. Maybe this is just teaching us that Oni Ronin is way too good. Oni Ronin is rather good. Because he's... Like, Warcry is costed like plus one plus one on the unit mm -hmm. in so this game. War, uh, Oni Ronin is often better than a one mana three two. Yeah, in that sense. That, that's that's fucking crazy. Anyway, uh, Young Gun is merely fine, correctly common. Illustration is meh, whatever. Yeah, play your, He's a boy. Your, uh, he has a, a rifle. He's standing on a man. Whatever. Just give him your ornate katanas. Pick ornate katana is what we're teaching you in this uh, set. Of Seriously, play ornate katana. Uh, next up is regular dog. It's a yeah, it's a, if it were blink dog, it would be a, <laughs> a thing from my a, a thing from the roguelike that I play a lot. Well, that that dog. would also blink be dogs are important there. That would also be copyright infringement, I think. I'm pretty uh, sure you maybe. can't have like literal blink dogs, displacer beasts, or beholders. No, Adom just flat has uh, and blink dogs in it. They might have. Been oh, like, okay. Maybe they just scoffed at, at <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Don't about this rogue -like uh, I hope people sport. care about Blink Wolf though. He's okay. He's like decent. again, like if you think of him, if you think of him as two one on two one, draw a card. Mm. That would be really good, right? Again, like it's in one of the cards you really hate drawing. Yeah, you really like this guy being on top of your deck. You don't like him being in your hand. Right. So he's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna evaluate warp as seventy five percent of draw a card, or draw point seven five mm. of a card. It might be wrong, but I'll I'll do it. Play so with brainstorm or whatever. Right. I mean that that's that's not a a huge faction ask. And uh, there's even like warp support in the set, so you can you could even support. be like cheaper. Um, moreover, if you compare them to things like um, Dark Wisp or Temple Scribe, he sort of compares favorably to both of those, being like slightly more aggressive. Like two power is a whole lot more than one on a it's, unit. It's 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 over double, in fact, in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh. Yeah, try to play this off the top of your deck. 
try to at least. Yeah, Kavanaugh probably has the the right of it. Like a high cost warp is only like drawing a card a lot less of the time because it's yeah. it's um less and less likely that you'll be able to cast it. But this one is really cheap, so yeah. Like the the if a larger warp cost is like gets more and more like a small warp cost can afford to be a little inefficient, like this guy. But the larger you go, the sort of worse it becomes to be to be inefficient with mm -hmm. warp because it lowers the likelihood that you're going to be able to use it. Yeah. Overall, I like this guy. It's good, good common. Here's Smith Hammer, it's or a, a guy, <laughs> a guy admiring his own arm. This is it's fancy like, hey. uh, Elvis Presley <laughs> with, uh, with a war hammer. Yeah, pump it. Yeah. Uh, this is no ornate katana, but works with the young gun pretty well. Yeah, being able to like hand off overwhelm is pretty good. What do we? Wait, 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 wait. We already have like Morning Star for that, right? Yeah, that, that's Morning like, Star is a really, uh, it's like a four mana three three. Four mana three three, weapon. So now we have another way to to pass overwhelm, the so one that common. is underwhelming. Put them tish. Yeah, um, Overwhelm has gotten more valuable, though. It's always been a little bit valuable in terms of, like, Infiltrate, although because of how those factions line up, it doesn't really happen a whole lot. But with Spark, Overwhelm, be there, you get your Trample gets to do you something, maybe if you have a Spark card worth playing. We'll get to Spark when we see a card that has Spark. Yeah, I guess, but... yeah, yeah, there is. There is the Spark. Here I was talking up Forge Wolf as a way to enable Spark over Fire Main Cub, and... Overwhelm is probably a better way to do that. I would not be completely embarrassed to play this in my aggressive draft deck, but I would probably be embarrassed to play it anywhere else. Yeah, that's about what I would feel. I would, again, prefer, I love Ornate Katana. But we're this we're moving on to Granite Ring! <laughs> this is not what Granite looks like, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's Granite is not red and, like, made of lava. <laughs> what, Molten Granite Ring? You would not be able to wear that. Unless molten salt what is, what is wrong with... Okay, okay, guys. You can even keep most of the sounds. What is wrong with garnet? Huh? Mm, like, garnet. it's it's red. It's a real gem. It looks like something. You can even almost anagram that. Take the eye out, and you can have an anagram of garnet. You don't even have to change that much. You could just, like, say it was a bad Photoshop, and it's then... It's the Garnetti ring. <laughs> Garnetti. <laughs> it's a Garnetti ring. My name is Gabriel Garnetti. I am here to <laughs> plus one my unit. I've uh, I've had the opportunity to play with one of these rings in limited before. What do you think of this one? Uh, once per turn, plus one and overwhelm. Why would you want to do this more than once? Like I feel like you need that effect precisely once ever, and then you've made your attack, and then okay, good. You're paying a lot of mana for this ability. Like, six mana to be able to give something plus one, plus zero, and overwhelm for yeah, a the, turn? The only way to give your... It's all of your units, right? Give your units. Okay, yeah, so this so might that's, be a trumpet blast. I, I, think, I think what this actually is, is a combination with Xen and Obelisk. Like, you would much mm -hmm. rather have Xen and Obelisk than this, but it's very easy to... Like, get in a place where you have a huge board, your opponent has a huge board, <coughs> and you're just staring each other down with your Xenon Obelisks, but this is the Breaker, and it's an aggressive ability. So, like, Team Overwhelm uh, is something that you should not sleep on, but I don't see this... Like, it's just... This is unfitting as a an every-turn kind of thing. Yeah. I, I also think I would rather have... Uh... Uh, rally most of the time over this. Right? Moreover, you're saying, you know, you're pl you're paying playing this, and then saying to your opponent, okay, <laughs> I'm going to attack you next turn. It's this gigantic uh, what do you call it? Telegraph? <laughs> That's... Yeah, telegraph. <laughs> the tricks on board, it's like you're, you're putting the big excitement point over your head, like in Beautiful Joe. <laughs> uh, you're, like... pl you're, play well, you're playing a fire deck, like you're not attacking every turn. Yeah, I don't know. You're gonna play your there, are, and not attack. there are ambiguous turns. There are ambiguous turns. Not with Granite like, Ring, though. You're playing Forge Wolf. Yeah, I think it, <laughs> this is a cycle, and calling them hero powers is not far off. You know, it is it is a fixed cost, is once per turn. Yeah. They have like, similar effects. Ring. 
Especially compared to yeah. some of the other ones. I think, you, I mean, the no way do you want more than one of this, or maybe, oh, maybe two not. in the deck if you just... If you if you're somehow really good at going wide, and need the overwhelm to push damage through, then then cool. But I think that like, the existing tools in in like fire alone are already better than this. So yeah, like if you're playing this with your assembly line, you could do better maybe. Yeah. Okay. Next up is grenade, which mm. is a spell. Sack three three and three, huh? Mm -hmm. Three and three. It's a. Uh... You sack something for a searing blood or whatever. Yeah. There's one thing that keeps me from really liking this spell, and you probably know what it is. Is it face ages? <laughs> it, is, it is the word fast. Oh, yeah. This, this is just the spell. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, if it's a fast spell, it's another sack outlet, which mm -hmm. we have what? Uh, straight burnout up. Is, the, is the version of this that is fast, uh, but okay. it's not 3 and 3. It's no, well, I was five. thinking of the of the... Shadow De card. Uh, Devour. Devour. That that one's actually good. Like, Devour rescues a guy from death. Grenade just sort of... Okay. I need an extra Grenadin kicking around. And it's not that hard. You can yeah, you can get tokens pretty easily, but it's it's not free either. So I don't know. A, I guess this could weird. be a way to, like, clear the way. Like, you kill a guy with this, yeah. and then you deal damage and squeak and damage. Yeah. So hello, gens. Might not be bad. Hi. Yo, oh, Jens is here too. Hooray! Mm -hmm. We're going through all the cards. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what what have we touched on? Uh, uh, so we're we're going through the fire cards first, and I'm up to hip shot. <laughs> so. Oh, um. Okay. Yeah, I had, I had sorted my uh, card builder. Okay. I just to include to just in. omens of the past and Ooh. include owned and unowned things, and uh, non-premium only. Yeah. Sweet. So I hate hip shot. So, really? Yeah. What? What's wrong not with it? Not a bad spell. This is okay. You're way over. Like, mm. Mm. look, I I admit it's not torch, but it, it is a damage spell that says draw a card on it. Asterisk. I, oh, <laughs> so, like like draw a card. One out of every seventy-five times well, the, this card is available for casting. It's weird how this kind of card advantage works. Um, more, like, whereas, like a, I compared these to like um, Future Sight before, but when you're playing Future Sight, you get immediate and total access to the card under your warp card. Um, and whereas when you play something that says do something, draw a card, you immediately gain access to the card you're cantering into. So hip sh warp is card advantage, though. You're playing cards off the top of your deck. But, like, the cost and effect of this is just pretty underwhelming. Two damage has trouble making a huge effect on the board uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, but because it is card advantage, I can't really hate it. I just feel very underwhelmed by the card. I think it's fine. Mm. I don't think it's a torch. I think it's another... Um, I don't want to say temper, because that's way worse than this. It, um, it's, it's more comparable to, to Piercing Shot. It's even yeah, still, yeah, it's, it's also uncommon. So it's, it fills out the slot of, like, questionable removal... <laughs> Yeah, question, in your... more, it's some questionable removal. This uh, one is definitely questionable. I guess okay. like, warp, like like a hip shot, like fulfills my totality of the thing. Leaving on like my thoughts on warp as a mechanic in this game, is it feels none of the warp cards really feel pushed, and it keeps any of them from feeling really um, exciting. You will, will, I, I think there, there, there are some a, time cards that are. Pushed. You're gonna you're gonna see a couple that are like pushed. <laughs> Like um, but just, yeah, there's there's I, Alchemical Blast, which I think is also a fast spell. Yeah, Alchemical so, Blast is fast, and I don't know. So I bad. I wouldn't sleep on that. I don't think this is amazing. I I think it's functional. Okay, let me rephrase. But Some r red we'll, warp we'll cards that are not pushed. We'll move on. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, to yeah. Jawbone Hatchet, <laughs> three power, double fire, one one relic weapon, sparks two a three three we relic weapon. I guess I should explain Spark, since this what is our spark first. Has? It's it's Bloodthirst. Or Bloodlust? Blood what was the... Bloodthirst. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the magic mechanic. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, even if this were just a plain 3-3 three, three weapon, or 3-3 or three, three relic weapon, I don't think I would play it all that often. Really? It's yeah. Weird like, we already have Sword of Ikaria. And that's a, yeah. a flat 3 mana 3-2 three, with Warcry. And that's, I think, just way better than this. And it's already I'm, a double influence requirement, so... I'm wondering how big of a difference a 3-3 three, three and a 3-2 actually have. Because I, I mean, I've played a lot... Yeah, I mean, it, I guess I don't it, really know. I guess it it it, uh, it goes back to what we were talking about—the difference between two and one power, right? So, yeah. but like a lot of the creatures, you I guess this in the old meta, a lot of the creatures you were killing had two power, but I guess a lot of the new ones might have three. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, as far as thinking, this is a, a relic weapon versus an actual weapon. So there's a a couple visual clues. Uh, one. The background color of plain old weapon uh, health values is red for weapons if they go on units, and it's purple <laughs> for so, players. So this this was weird because in every single spoiled card, it was purple regardless of type. <laughs> which which yeah. like, that which which that confused me to no end. I was like, I was like, wow, this card looks like. Like this, this card is like really. Oh wait, that's just a weapon, not a relic weapon. Like, gotta, right. read, gotta read the type line. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's not reliable. It's reliable in game. It's reliable in game. Yeah, they, they've uh, the, the things they definitely previewed were uh, beta because we'll be seeing at least one card that's had its templating change that's made it much more readable. Mm. That's also a spark card. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, to, we'll get that. to that. As far as uh, enabling spark. A lot of the time, you're going to do it with attacking. And if you're attacking, it's usually... Oh, the, the boys are quiet? Okay, I, I can, can... Oh. That's I can fix that. That's pretty easy to adjust in any number of ways. Well, I really only have one way of doing it. Uh, oh, you can... If you, if you right-click on our names in Discord, you can use your volume up. Right, but that boosts it for, for my ears, too, which is a little worse. You, you don't no, want to no, no. hear more. You guys... Shush, I'm fixing it. Don't adjust anything. <laughs> Sorry. Don't adjust Sorry, while I'm adjusting. <laughs> okay, they're they're okay. probably better now. So what one one other thing I was going to say with Jawbone Hatchet is that Jawbone Hatchet being a one one with a plus two plus two ability on it uh, means that it's a little more happy to be recurred because that uh, can happen multiple play times. with your smuggler stash. Or a card we'll see upcoming. Okay. Yeah, well, right. That's, but even then. Yeah. That, 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 that's pretty marginal. That means that I might f actually slot it into my stupid... Uh, <laughs> what is, uh, see, now I need to look at the deck, because I can't remember the Crowd guy. favorite. Crowd favorite. Is that the, 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 the six coster that... Yeah. yeah. He doesn't play relic weapons. Yeah, though, but... crowd favorite. He just says weapon, and you can absolutely grab relic weapons, which is why I have... Oh, and um, play it. Okay, I thought he blood... played it on himself. No, this is why I have Bloodright Callus in the deck. Yeah. <laughs> just tapped it, Callus and... Anyway, this de uh, that deck is a load of fun, and maybe I will put the stupid spark thing in. Now I have to set up my filters again. Damn it, I do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> own non-premium omens, except... Jawbone Hatchet. Done talking about Jawbone Hatchet. Uh, one on. last thing about it, though. Is no. it worth playing in limited as no. removal? Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> it is a relic weapon of any if, variety. Like, it is if you want a 1-1 one, one relic weapon, it's not really my, what I'm excited to be doing. No, it, will, it would be garbage, but you'd still run it. Like, I think the Magma Javelin is the worst thing in the fucking world, but I will still run it in limited because it can kill yeah, something. It's 4 mana, 4 damage at the very least. All right, Sparkbot. I was uh, once I learned how Spark worked, I stopped being enthusiastic about Sparkbot. You were hoping that it would get multiple Grenadin. Yes. Uh, oh. Rip. So. It's not life. Life Force sometimes does that, but not always. Uh, like a one-four yeah. is not anything that I want in a fire deck. The way that fire decks have been made up. Like why? Why can't this guy be like a three-one or something? I, 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 
I kind of like that it exists as a defensive option for fire, like giving it, like you know, giving it something different to do. Uh, that said, it's still not good. Yeah, I would like that more if you were not alone in that. Right. So we'll my my evaluation of Spark Sparkbot might change depending on future cards, I guess. My feeling on Sparkbot is that this is a pretty mediocre like gain, even if you do get it, and it requires you to be curving out aggressively. Right. What this means is you can suicide attack yeah. your grenade it's in and get one back. Yeah, that's. I and guess that's what it means. <laughs> produce a scaly gruen along the way. So yeah, I'm not super excited about this card, but yeah. you might be forced. Yeah, to like play Spark is point. is kind of an aggressive mechanic, right? Mm -hmm. Like you want to be damaging your opponent all the time, and then including a defensive card in an aggressive mechanic is weird. Right. But like all the other way, all the other ways of dealing damage for Spark that are you know in in the set that are like ah oh, this is some sort of Spark enabler that still costs you know the, yeah, the, the maybe, that ain't free like maybe they realized that the best three mana way to make Grenadines already exists yeah. and they can't improve on it <laughs> it's like oh whoops it's, it's I guess we have assembly line, line and it's already yeah. amazing. Mm. So next up is what the hell is this? Stone Scar Excavator. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which you can pay for and discard a power card to deal one damage to the enemy player for each power card in your void. <laughs> so you go four for one, and then four for two, and four for three, unless you're this... playing like the mill guy. I'm I think somebody on the team really liked seismic assault. Yeah. Once per turn. Once, Once per, per turn. turn. I guess, no, this is finally the, uh... Oh, what is it? We can make the 150 card deck. Uh, no, the, uh, the, the 50 power deck that has Stone Scar Excavator and ways to find it. And ways to throw the power in the yard? Yeah, maybe not even that. <laughs> Wait, how long would this take to kill your opponent if you just had this and power? Right? Seven. This is, like, on turn three... Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, se 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 sorry, seven activations. So, seven activations. Yeah. Well, which is seven, like, turns after turn three. So, seven. turn 11, seven. you'd better watch seven. out. Seven. Also, yeah. it doesn't work if they have a face Aegis. Also... I, I guess this could be interesting if you are playing some kind of, like... Ha like, if there was some way in these colors to loot, which there, there's, like, one... Or if you're playing the uh, spore cap guy, or like, okay, you do that, it flips five lands, and then you pay four to six your opponent. Well, uh, what, what, the I guess the idea with this card is it lets you turn your excess power into damage. Like, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's turn 27. I have drawn my 18th p power, and my opponent is still not dead. You know, you that's know for like, your grindy stone scar decks... Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be, like, grindy. I mean, if you get the last one or three points out of this, that could still be enough. Yeah. yeah. It I'm also like... doesn't need to be, even though the name says Stone Scar, it doesn't need to be... <laughs> it basically does, though. Like, that's the only yeah, way to dump I'm, lands in the yard. Yeah, I don't really know, like, a Praxis <laughs> way or other Sky ways. Craig. Like, okay. Sky Craig. No, I that's, that's true. You, you could, your, uh, echo Your Westwind Herald. Yeah, the, not only your Westwind Herald, but the, um... Wind voice, echo yeah. thing. And we're, we also Damn have it. a we also have a new uh, there's there's a new primal card that's uh, th there's a couple new like looting. Can I play this with mana severance though? Like where they discard the land? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, spore folk finally has synergy. I'm I'm yeah, putting this folk. down. All right. Next up is stone shaker. This card I'm excited about. <laughs> Get it up? What? <laughs> because this is a big ass mana ritual. Look at this thing. I guess. A 3 mana 1 1 <laughs> that yeah, says reduce the cost one. of each unit in your yeah, deck by a three 1. 3 mana 1 1 that says generate 28 mana. <laughs> How many of those cards are you actually casting in a given game? Uh, That's the amount of, of mana that he's actually generating. Yeah. It's so like 3. Four. So I could see myself like stuck on 2 and with this guy in my hand and I would draw like 3 cost units for the rest of forever yeah, and I would fine. I'm it. still excited about this card. Okay. I think he's you're trying, fine. You're trying, to, you're trying to like warp and I'm this, I'm, this Well this this guy works well with warp. Yeah. So use your mana. 
I I don't think this guy is like bad, but I think he's merely okay, which was also oh. my evaluation of Hipshot. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna okay. I wanna I wanna address a, 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 a the last like three or four comments. That is, this card works well in warp. Good in warp. It's warp. I don't think that deck like w with warp. You don't need to play fifty warp cards. Like no, I don't. don't. I, it, it's not a tribe that feeds super into itself because it's very hard to cast like six cards at the same time without playing very poor cards like Stone Shaker in your deck. Well, one of my thoughts about this is um, you're playing this in, like, you sh if you're playing this in a warp deck, you're probably playing this in some kind of Praxis deck, right? Like the white red, which has a lot of, like, team pump effects and small cantripping creatures. So, like, if you play this guy and, like, you play your, like, your three mana one, like, your, like, your Haster 1-1 one, one, and, like, your Temple Scribe and, like, these cheap creatures that you could maybe, like, just keep ripping the top of your deck. And then you have, like, a... a uh, a vault monitor or something where suddenly him being this like a three mana one one isn't so bad considering the effect. I don't know. There's like these little value creatures, I think, combine well with this kind of a, a thing. <laughs> how many how many times can we have draw a card on a on a creature that you can just make zero cost and yeah. Storm, yeah. storm through your deck? And then and then you can then you like uh crush. <laughs> like I don't know. This, so I'm actually is it, kind so of the other the other kind of the other kind of stupid part of this guy is uh, I also want to put this in my crowd favorite deck because I found myself so many times with like a whole bunch of units in my hand and the inability to cast them because they're all slightly too expensive. Uh, and that deck really butter. loves creatures with summon effects because I pick them Ooh. back with Smuggler's Stash. These are more, so, uh, yeah. more mana dorks. I don't know. Yeah, and people are talking about strangers because you can have the like stranger who draws cards when you play a stranger, <laughs> and there are lots of two cost strangers who could be made hey, one. You're which... non stranger in your stranger deck. Yeah, that could, oh, uh, that could get also, kind of disgusting. But also note that this card doesn't affect your hand. Just yep, does yeah. not. Don't don't like that that that's something that like you might assume the card does, and then the first time you play it, you realize that your hand is... Yeah. This isn't Thorisian. Yeah, not in birth Thorisian. <laughs> God, if Thorisian did uh, your deck, too. So yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't <laughs> sleep on this guy, but we'll see. I think I he has potential. I, I would never play him in Limited. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's the I other would thing. not either. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, is, okay, uh, I guess... Weirdo constructed we're all card. That. <laughs> Goofball constructed card. Next up, Twin Barrel uh, Gun. <laughs> It's, it's, a, have... it's a sh this shotgun <laughs> offers you no power at all. Nope. Look, it offers you twice as much power as you had. This yeah. shotgun relies on your own power. <laughs> Take this, mortal. <laughs> what are you shooting? You will use your own power. <laughs> and then they like hold the gun and realize, yeah, I could have dealt double damage the whole time. And, like. <laughs> I just needed a second barrel. Look, it clearly has ammo on it. It has again the like top right corner of these cards is the most important part somehow. Oh, wow, that. look at how tiny those shotgun shells are. They to are. Them. They would they never fit in that show. barrel. Wow. Maybe you, they... What is that? What yeah, the you, heck? You gotta jam like six of them into each barrel. <laughs> no, the, it's a shotgun of shotgun shells. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. What the heck? It's a um, bunch of so yeah, uh, it, it's like uh, Righteous Fury, but a lot of more recurrable and has better working with Warcry. And and playable like in more decks because it's monocolored. It, uh, it, it, it fits in the crowd favorite. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> this, which, crowd like, favorite it. Crowd favorite it, and now crowd favorite is a, a six power. It's just yeah. an interesting huh. card. It's played on your flyer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whereas this one I never want to play in Constructed. I think yeah. it, it, it's fun to Warcry onto. Like, that's kind of cool. Getting, like, mm -hmm. a million billion extra damage out of it, effectively. Um, yeah, put, if you can put this on something with uh, First Strike as well, that's really powerful. Yeah. But... I'm, I'm glad to see this effect. I, I wish it were, like, cheaper, more powerful had a claw something but i i appreciate the the elegance and the tiny shotgun shells next up is audacious bandit bandits yeah bandit with the picky sticking out 
on the gun. So the, the can be cordial. <laughs> she's mm. she's also dainty. <laughs> is that tracer? I think it is tracer. They're just like, okay, we want oh tracer, God. but a cowboy. Yeah, that that <laughs> that is that's. <laughs> That's very audacious well, this, of them to use that. Uh, this yeah. particular gunslinger rogue will permanently have quick draw if you ev if you do spark it. Now and this is four two quick draw think, is quite good. Yeah, this is pretty powerful if you can quick draw it, and if you can't, it sucks. But it's not completely the worst. We played four three vanilla and limited before. It's like, but the, the the jump in power between with and without quick draw yeah. is huge. It's yeah. like a four a four two first strike is just impossible to block. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Have this a is the lot. kind of thing that that also makes me hate Sandstorm Titan even more. Mm. <laughs> Although you just you just have to give target attacking creature plus two plus two until it's to turn scry one. I think this is a, a good a good curve consideration with the other gunslinger rogue. What is that thing? Three mana, three three, gets quick draw sometimes. Ah, uh, yeah, the uh, I have no idea what it's called. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. know which card you're talking about. Right, but... red trained Armadon, but yeah. with guns. Yeah. <laughs> with guns. <laughs> so well, I think the gun. the limited curve of that into this is really good. And other than yeah, that, especially if your three three somehow has the first strike, which means they're not blocking anyways. Yeah. Oh no, I said Sandstorm Titan. And I got four sand. Shit. Sand. God, it's going to happen every time that I bring it up, but I can't not bring it up. It's too Ooh. relevant. Yeah. I mean, this, again, this is a common, good for limited, mm. features tracer. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next is Grenadine Cannoneer, cool. which has a, little, a guy with a little thumbs up in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he's going into the cannon, and he's lighting the fuse to the cannon. <laughs> So when the fuse goes off, it blows the guy into the... The guy becomes the firebomb. Good. He's yeah. the firebomb. Uh, Formula 5-1 is a stat line that we haven't seen, I think. We've seen, like, Cobble Brute, but, right, like, Cobble not... Brute costs, like, f 5 in this game, I think? But yeah. I don't know. This is, these are the same firebombs from Light the Fuse. The yes. one mana spell with Destiny that says deal 5 damage to yourself. Which, mm -hmm. because you're casting it, can be even more fun if you have uh, that spell damage guy out <laughs> now. Yeah, oh. also it does not care about Aegis. It will, it's, oh, your it's your so spell. It's your spell. You build you build a deck around that bell, and then just you're like, I'm not keep ringing this bell, and then all of a sudden you find that you, you the bell tolls for thee. Like. That 20, 20, 20 power <laughs> firebomb blows up in your face. Man, that would be cool. That'll never happen, though. So uh, yeah, I think this we have to is... evaluate this guy as a four mana five one. Like even if you spark him, the effect is so greatly delayed that it may as well not have happened. Right in 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 constructed one firebomb. There's a reason that the firebombs put like you know a bunch in your deck because mm -hmm. in constructed a seventy five card deck, chances you actually seeing that are not high. Yeah, I'm gonna chalk this card up to be solidly cute. Yeah, yeah, that's a play a cute card. Play this card. It's got a cute effect. It's a, it's got a cute art. Yeah, it's, it is. It's not as good as some of the other cards that I've said are like okay. I think it's worse than okay, but yeah. the potential for like fun, I guess, is is much higher. It's also going to trade, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it's going to trade with their Vara's favor. Ugh. It's going to trade <laughs> not with limited. Them in. Not limited. It's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up is the good card. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> right, this is the oh. card I was talking about that had its formatting changed. Right. When this uh, card was spoiled, but the spark was the first line of text. And it oh, so it looked good. like the entire effect depended on the thing sparking, uh -huh. which left this guy in the lurch as a four on a three six a lot of the time, which is kind of like a, a, a triple four. fire devotion is serious. Like you had better yeah. be in a fiery deck. If yep. you're gonna play this guy, but uh, the reward is he can attack through Sandstorm Titan. <laughs> yeah, being, being a six-six <laughs> for four. Four mana six-six is a appreciable effect. Yeah, so uh, if he's life force does not work. He's the real deal. 
God, you bu- you build a life force deck. Your opponent plays this. You are like your uh-huh. you, removal or lose. You know, yeah, like, please <laughs> please draw your suffocate, which this yeah. guy conveniently dies to. Clearly meant for constructed. He will blow someone out and limited. That's yeah. like spark gets easier to do the more expensive the card is because there's more that you could possibly have, right? Like it's later in the game, you have more creatures, more effects, and yep. you know this guy is the perfect middle ground of that. I think where you can have a turn six that's like two damage to your face. Now I play my groundbreaker, yo. <laughs> or even in the like the blue the blue red decks, like you could potentially curve this with uh, this Thunderbird, just like a a Windrake with with Aegis, so that yep. you are getting in. Like they're not killing yeah. your guy. Yeah. So the only yeah. kind of questionable part is why there's like a tiny hand, like right here. Like clearly from the size of this guy's like head and his arm here, you'd think that the hands would be like larger. Oh, he has, but he has a, no. He's got he has four set. Of, he's got two sets of arms. Like below the four is his big hand. And oh, the there's another arm here. Yeah. Oh. That's why he gets double damage. He's oh, see, I arm. thought... <laughs> ah. No, 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 no. I, I didn't really see these arms, but I saw this arm and, like, this going back and then a tiny hand. So I thought he just had, like, a very small hand. <laughs> the broadest shoulders in the world <laughs> and tiny hands. Well, he's only got uh, three power. That's that's the groundbreaker. He's, he's pretty mm. groundbreaking. Uh, next up is Library Phoenix, which... Uh-huh. Seems like the worst possible familiar you could have in a library. <laughs> Dumbledore kept one in his library. And that's still a well, bad Well, Dumbledore idea. was also insane. Oh, well, yeah. He was a wizard. <laughs> he just... Oh, he Lord. Poison. It came up. Listen. Oh, Remember, this poison. phoenix has, like, extra feet? Like, what? It's got the, the three-foot like, thing that... It's like a grit... Oh, yeah, it's a suntail hawk. The, the, yeah, yeah a suntail hawk. Heck. Yeah, it's it's got four feet and back feet. It's well, it's got four feet and also has four feet. Right, so it's like they wanted it to be a griffin, but then they're like, wait, I don't know what a phoenix looks like. Whatever, let's just <laughs> put it put it on fire. It'll so be this, fine. So this thing starts life as a four mana two two. Well, that's a that's a start. I love four mana two twos. Tell me more. Mm. <laughs> Is it, is it, Reduce the cost they, of non-unit cards in your hand by one. This is mm-hmm. non-unit, so a little better than trail stories, but still trail stories. Yeah, I mean, it could after not the start of your turn. So I guess it, it takes one turn to pay for itself, mm. more or less, yeah. and that's only if you're... I, th- I think that's that's, that's kind of realistic, because then you sort of got a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, and then later oh. than that, or if it ever activates, which I don't think it will, it could be like Good. Well, it's like I guess from I guess you get a three mana two two if it activates once because it's reduced to a non-unit card by one cards. Okay, I read a non-unit card. Okay. Yeah, no, that's it, all. So yeah, that's this mm-hmm, maybe. I'm, and then I'm, the hellbent thing's never happening. Honestly, the hellbent thing is is the like the the reason I would want to include this in a deck where it's like you know what what if I'm just playing a a, a straight fire deck that has an empty hand by the time I cast this and this is just a five power flying threat. Yeah, play this yeah. with Praxis Outlaw. Mm. Be rootin' tootin'. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think this guy is very good. I, I appreciate the the design at, at, yes. at play here. You know, it makes things cheaper so that you can empty your hand and then gives you a benefit for emptying your hand. It, okay, hey, cool. It reduces the cost of uh, Midnight Riders or whatever it's called by two. <laughs> <laughs> Witching Hour? Itching yeah. Hour. Yeah. yeah. Midnight Riders is a better name. On, Midnight on, Rider. <laughs> on the design, I also like that it doesn't like flat call out some mechanic. This could be like, ah, oh, my Skycrag spell deck, or maybe this is something that's like I want to do warp things, or I want to or I just want to play an egg. Like this fits in a lot of things and doesn't specifically tell you mm. play this with yeah. or... Would this would this I card do... be a little too compelling if it had its own flying? I think it would be functional if it just had flying and got the power sh- only. I think cards that are called Phoenix should 
fly base because that is what we expect the card like, to what, do. He's too lazy. You haven't set the library on fire yet. Once well, you're completely a... out of ideas, then he will he will jump out of the library. Well, it's, it's a fire card, so you only get to have flying if you're like steel forge dragon or whatever. Uh, whatever. No, uh, that would not. If you like Crossbow Flex asks, uh, if your last card in hand is a fast spell and this card is being blocked, if would casting the last spell cause the flying to go in effect before the combat, thus negating the block? No, that is that that would it, the block would still happen. Like you can't levitate past the blocker. Yeah, you could, after the fact, you could like fast spell after you declare attackers because you have a stop. Right. Yeah, and if you if your last spell is a uh, rapid shot, then <laughs> you can yeah. kill anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you have the window to dump your rapid shot on this guy to give him plus seven plus zero in flying in first strike. So, yeah. so uh, on the whole, I don't like this card very much. <laughs> Could put it back. If they, if they edit this to have its own flying, I'll, I will. I think I would start around. liking it then. I it also would require an extra line of text. Well, if it if it actually had its own flying, then it's like, oh, maybe that enables Spark as just an evasive creature. My hmm. evasion is good. Hmm. Well, I, I'm sure it will make my snowball cost zero someday. Huh. Outlands Brute! An mm. uncommon 4 mana 4 1 centaur warrior. I said mana. Damn it. You did. Damn it! Ah, oh, the worst. Uh, I mean, it's, you do better than I do, Kaz. I barely try. I do so well for so long, and that undermines <laughs> it. It's like I had a streak going where I don't use any magic terms in talking about Eternal for like a while, and then uh, then the streak is broken. He has yeah. charge and warp, which is a good combination. And when that's it, a good combination, and he punishes the enemy for targeting him, which that's never going to happen. They are going to block him block. with a well, Grenadine drone. It could be that they try to kill it with Vara's favor. They could. Mm. They could. Is, so. They take a damage in that case, you know, or, you know, or a like, snowball, or you know. So yeah. every different every faction has its own way of dealing with it, and that blocks a couple. I feel really bad if I had to vanquish this. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very poor. Uh, I think this guy's pretty decent. He compares favorably to the other kind of effect Fire already has for this, which is Magma Hound, which is five mana, and its card advantage yeah. comes from the fact that it's a land. Uh, I don't feel the worst casting this guy out of my hand if it comes to it. That's true. Like, four surprise damage. Like, you can wait yeah. until they don't have any 1-1 one, one blockers in the way, or whatever nonsense. And he also works well with uh, with any pump effect, really, so yeah, like, you're, you're Praxis and you have your Xenon Obelisk or whatever. Or, like, even just, like, giving him first strike or giving him... So do, uh, I, I think the guy works. I'm not super excited to play with him. That's about how I. They've feel been about really them. careful with with charge. Yeah, charge and yeah. I think warp have like been they're, very measured. They're terrified of having a powerful charge card, which absolutely makes no sense next to Soulfire Drake. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is give everybody charge. It's like so. not only is it a like powerful unit on its own that has charge and evasion, it can also give charge to your so, entire deck. So oh. what the hell? One thing, one thing I will say is that this might look like something that, uh, like, this honestly is more of a constructed card in my eyes than a limited card because a one toughness on the ground creature in limited just says dies to everything and limited. Right, everyone limited, has blockers, like right. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter what faction you are; the ground is six units. You know, like <laughs> if they block it on when it's off the top of your deck, then that's just bad removal, and you. I guess I'd play. Bad removal in, in limited. Yeah, but yeah, this, the, this guy is the, interesting. The magma, but I don't think the magma javelin you can't aim. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of it, isn't it? Yeah, but it's free. It's not really free. Uh, free. We, we've, we've I'm totally free. Enough. The text bubble above it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he's all right. Uh, Reforge. This is mm. the one I was talking about earlier. Man, they have some. Very, very sophisticated blast furnaces to be able to get steel to melting temperature. Yeah, no kidding. Like they did well, that maybe that ain't steel. Maybe they're reforging like a silver sword. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I remember they did that. The film Conan, they do that in it with Conan technologies. I was like, when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, okay. Well, they, they fixed that in the newer 
Conan one, kind of. <laughs> you mean the hilarious movie? Yes. We're getting off. <laughs> because he, he talked about the Riddle of Steel and showed how hard it was. <laughs> oh, oh, my nose! <laughs> Uh, anyways, this card. What do you think of Reforge? I, I think it's quite poor. Um, I don't think I will ever have enough weapons that I will be comfortable playing this. Whereas, like, Smuggler's Stash can at least pick up units. You know, and it can also, I, like, the ceiling of Smuggler's Stash is four cards of value. Yeah, Fucking <laughs> draw four. I think I think this one's expensive, especially when, like, you look at adding one more to the cost and calling it Smuggler's Stash. But I also like the idea of just having, look, this is my chain char flail. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here yeah. it goes. Like, there are some specific weapons that really benefit from the pump, like the, the, the power surge flail, even something like like uh, Auric Rune Hammer really benefits from it. And then when you start getting up there to, like, Star Steel Daisho, <laughs> then you're starting to get a little bit exciting, but that's, like, in constructive. Right. Oh my God. Well, also, I reforge my Star Steel Daisho. <laughs> right. Also, like, the, the problem there is that is actually the cost of the card. Like, four is basically taking your turn off, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. So I, I like the card, but it's because I want to like the idea of just, like, my deck plays one weapon that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and now it's a, you know, but I don't want to take off my four for that. That's true. You can play this on any weapon. So, like, if you're a guy wearing your uh, plate or even, like, your Warhammer, your Warhammer of Might or whatever it's called dies, you get another bite at it. But one for one cantripping for this cost is not so exciting. Okay, so... Um... Nope, lost it. Moving on. Okay. Mm. Goodbye, Reforge. Uh, on to if Swift only... Stranger! No, I would like Reforge a lot better. One last note. If you could use it, like if you picked it like a conspiracy card and decided you hated your draft and just did it over. Oh, man. So ah, you the forge reforge. and then, the, then you the reforge. reforge. That, would be, that would be really good. Swift Stranger! Four mana, three, three with strangers out of charge. And he's a stranger. Stranger, of stranger, the stranger. new hill giant strangers, I think this one is the most exciting because charge is really good. Yeah, I could I could very easily yeah. see a stranger deck that like dumps a bunch of guys on one turn and then says, "Hey, uh, you die now." Yeah, most strangers are pretty cheap. Like a lot of the ones that get played are like two or three mana. Yep. And like you play this, and then like a first strike guy, and the one that's whatever a stranger attacks deals damage to your opponent, and like strangers give us some power, like yada yada yada, and like crunch, we yeah. attack. <laughs> right, like like the Praxis specifically, the Praxis strangers are all very aggressive, plus power, plus one plus one, plus, like they're, so you can get very hefty very quick. Yep. Um, also, as a just three three charge, he's fine. Yeah, playable right? and limited, like... not. Not quite the Phantom Monster Stranger, but mm, Strangers yeah. have charge. We already have a uh, four mana three three charge unit. The the dogs guy. The primal primal fire fire. Oh, uh, yeah. Tracker. Yeah, Hunt, Huntsman Tracker. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's that's a fine stat line. So he's he's fine on the whole. Uh, Thunderhoof Warrior, also a 4 on a 3-3, three, three, this time a Centaur Warrior, with Overwhelm and Ultimate to get slightly larger. <laughs> I like this guy in Limited quite a bit. We've had this guy before in, like, the what, the time guy who gets uh, who has Endurance mm -hmm. and has, like, Pay 8. This guy's a little more aggressively costed, which makes me like him. Well, whereas it, whereas I like the same. The, I like the other guy more because he gets gigantic. He does get right. gigantic. But like like, like Zenith like, Defender or whatever nonsense. Yeah, I was going to say, I like this guy more because they're both four mana three threes at the start, and you're either getting plus two, plus two, or plus five, plus five. Yeah. Uh, but but there, there are a lot of ultimate abilities in Omens of the Past that feel not so much ultimate as the card functions now. Hooray. <laughs> Uh, and I think true. this is this falls into that category. This guy's they, limited fine. They, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. They've scaled back on how ultimate ultimate things can be, which I am fine with some of some of the ultimates. Are... Okay. Anyway, 
That's that's getting me angry about Seraph again. Yeah, Seraph. Which is not, not an ultimate, ultimate but sh fucking should be. It's, it should be, and it shouldn't be able to make eight mana two twos. So what do you think about Dust Blind? Wow, this card's expensive. Oh my <laughs> this thing god! Blows. Wow. Holy yes. crap! <laughs> expensive is not the first card. We're first word that comes to mind when I look at this card, uh, but bad. Bad is yeah. As you are paying five mana for not even a falter, because yeah, this falter existed in the, it's called Cloud of Ash, I think, which is like three mana exhaust enemy units, and that card is still not. Good. I thought it was four. It might be four. But anyway, yeah, and it can't do this to uh, endurance endurance monsters. units. You, you can't exhaust them right. this way. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not even flash freeze. Like it, it doesn't even stun or something. Like no, this right. just exhaust. It's also, not an instant. You See, I use this defensively. Right. I would not. This is a warp card, and I would not play this if you scratched off warp and then put draw a card on it. Yeah, I don't think I would play this under any circumstance. Yeah. Why on earth did they? Whatever. I'm, you I'm can make this on. cost zero, and I would still be iffy about it. We're, we're moving on. <laughs> How about another five power spell? Now this Whoa. card is a five mana, ver a five mana destroy target creature, which has a venerable lifespan in card games. Yeah, this is this has been the limited. Not I'm not gonna say superstar. I'm gonna say limited role player and you know mm -hmm. yeah. mainstay bread and butter. I like the flavor. Hey. It's like you cannot shoot if they have guns. <laughs> it's like, oh no, he's got a gun. <laughs> you, pull, you pull out your gun, you look, and it's like, I'll shoot that one instead. <laughs> you turn to the left. And... In limited, you are usually killing whatever you're targeting with this. You can, you can get up on mana with this. You're usually getting down on mana with this, but it kills a flying creature. Right. Uh, well, we have <laughs> Primal has a spell that does that it for does, two. So, <laughs> but this thing will kill whatever you need killed, most likely, unless it's like a five, se a five, six overwhelm or something. Man, <laughs> I would actually, I would, I would like this spell a hell of a lot more if it could hit the face naturally. Oh, and then it would just be like another five mana, five, five. damage burn spell. Well, the thing I would actually like, and I would be fine with that. But the thing I would like about that even more is that you could keep the text intact and then if they have the last word fun. then you can't attack yeah. <laughs> you can't do this the runic revolver <laughs> like yeah right but no oh, one God, has, no God, one ever God. has runic revolver though that's <laughs> no one will ever play that card so you don't have to worry about it that's a uh, solid removal yep uh, moving on is pit fighter not a pit fighter though. Not yeah, not a five six. When I yeah. saw this card, I knew this was a magic card, and I had to look it up and I remembered Glass. No, not Glass Golem. It's uh crap, I forgot. It's Panthers. Panther it's from like Warriors? Fifth... Yeah, Panther oh. Warriors from like Portal. Right, Glass Visions. Golem's two. Glass Golem is a six two. Uh -huh. See is weird. Uh Pit Fighter is also weird kind of generic. He trades. <laughs> I guess he his power. Down. His, he his, trades everywhere. <laughs> he, has, he has power greater than. Uh, or I'm sorry. He has strength greater than power cost. So. Mm -hmm. his that's, strength is greater than his that's power. something. Yeah. But that's about it. I'd, I'd play him. I am. I'm not going to be ashamed to play this guy in limited. Yeah, fill out your curve. Yeah. Like. He only now has on to the, hit once. <laughs> on the opposite end of spectrums, if we're so talking about now we have I always want to be playing in limited. Uh, air elemental that can sometimes draw you a card, yes, which is this fucking crazy. Is where like <laughs> oh. they've established that five on a four four flyer other keyword is cost, and this one is good. I like mm. this a lot. Like I play the the five mana three three owl in limited, so yeah, five mana, three, I'll play three, anything no better. Than flying. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Like Huru Fledgling is is a playable guy, and uh, Pouncing Drake is somewhere above that. <laughs> yeah, somewhere <laughs> around main lineable, first pickable. There's other words. <laughs> I'm not sure you know. that five mana three three flyer is cost because. Uh, uh, Valkyrie Enforcer exists, so it does. Yeah. It's definitely tied to rarity. Mm -hmm. So, this yeah, warp, great. warp just means you can play it from the top of your deck, 
If you have a warp card on top, you get to see it. Your opponent does not. And you can you can cast it as if it were in your hand. One thing I, I can also say about warp is that I, I've 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 had it where I've had four power and flipped up a five costing warp card and then played the fifth power. And all of a sudden the warp card like boom glowed a little bit. Yeah. To let you know that like it's it. castable. <laughs> there are hints. Yeah. Uh, next up is Stone Powder Heretic, who's a gunslinger Oni. Five yeah. power, two is this, four. Is this Gino with a gun? Like this, <laughs> is a, this is an Oni with a gun. It is not honorable to use a gun. Double his attack it is a this turn. Shotgun. So he's sort of an attacking four four, possibly an attacking whatever. Whatever, yeah. yeah. Asking for weapons. Asking to be a five mana four four. That doesn't block very well. Yeah, that Ask, sounds kind of asking poor. for pumps. Build around me uncommons, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, play play your ornate katana. This is another lesson. We so keep next playing. up is uh, next up is bad news. The legendary spell, which is Jack <laughs> saying, "Check out these guns. <laughs> They're bad news." I love this card. It looks like his his pistol has a cigar poking out the end of it. It does. Oh my! It does. It also looks like he's he's making the jerk off motion at yeah, you, like is, hey, is, no. <laughs> 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 fucking Jack. Oh my he's got, god! He's, he's hiding his Jo crystal. In his so uh, so we have. I don't think we have this effect yet in in a turn. Yeah, so that's a relentless unique. assault or whatever. Mm -hmm. Attack and attack again. That's kind of cool. I'm pretty sure. Oh no no no! Killer gets spent, so you would not be able to like re kill her. But you could no, kill her. Really but you could and kill her and then regular attack. attack. Yeah. yeah. So this guy's rather power. This thing's rather powerful. Yeah, I, I think the warp looks tacked on on this one. It just. Eh. This, this looks like a card that like cost four and then they tacked warp and put two on it, right. and, like plus two cost on it for the warp. Like. Wait. Also, why is the wait? Why is the horn, like, disconnected there? It what? got broke off by the mana cost. What? It... Is that... Wait, they're all like that. Yeah. Have they always been this way? What? Yeah, I don't know. I think they changed the... They changed the card, the card frame. Card definitely frame. changed. Because, like, foils look way different now. Yeah, well, any foil, take a look at it, has, like, different bordering and, and such, oh. so... Okay. Well, anyway, bad news, I, I think, is bad news. This is too expensive for the effect. Um, I think uh, when you cast this, you are killing your opponent, though. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. like six mana to end the game. But, but you're also... this is So this is a card with warp that is worse than it looks with warp. Because, so it, looking back at the Pouncing Drake with warp, you mm -hmm. can, at any time that you have five power... You can just be like, I cast Pouncing Drake off the top of my deck. And you only have a one-turn window to do it. Yeah. This is going to be the times when bad news is on the top of your deck. It's a, a, the rare moment, and you have one creature. You've, uh, got, just, you've got a just, unit. Just draw it and keep putting it on top with uh, Nesting Avasaur. It'll be fine. <laughs> and then you could keep attacking with that Nesting Avasaur, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Although that does... Um... And then keep excavating. Now, if this guy attacks multiple times in a turn, <laughs> then oh. I, I guess he could double again. <laughs> and then we, oh, how, how many Lord. times can we do that? Well, I see... mean, as many bad news as you can fit. Well, Until your opponent dies. Yeah. <laughs> like... no, we need a, okay, we need a way. No, what we need to do is use these cards and like ways to give people invulnerable in order to. Find out the maximum integer that in, that uh, Eternal can handle. Ooh. I think I think the 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 empower doubler is the better way to figure that one out. That's probably true. Right. But you'll run out of lands eventually. Well, well I mean, you... you could also like, okay, you could put. I think 150 is the maximum deck size, uh -huh. and so you could have 50. I'm sorry, you could have 100 power in your deck. All of your power could have Echo, and you could play the spell that's like, play the top 10 power, and then you just play 20 power. <laughs> uh, is that better or worse than having multiple Azindel out? 
I have no idea. Because a Zindel is plus one power whenever a unit enters a void. Um. So can we have more units? Anyway. Whatever. <laughs> look at, <laughs> this, for, look about. at this ridiculous centaur. Look at this lady. I've, <laughs> I've got cannons. Guns. Uh, summon deal <laughs> one damage. <laughs> Those guns are huge! They only deal one, one point of damage. They only deal one damage, but... <laughs> Um, Throw a snowball. Like the guns, the cannons are just for show. They make like they make like uh, Monty Python paper craft noise. Like <laughs> whenever they go off, and they're just like it's just a lot of paper. Uh, that said, this thing is mainlineable and limited. Oh yeah, you're like yeah. Even if it's just one damage, it's to your opinion, it's, opinion, it's, it's bizarre. Stone. But I understand that they didn't want to make like flame tongue kabu. Yeah. Or like a six mana two two that dealt four damage or something. That's yeah. I can I can understand it. Well, pinger to turn on spark. I don't think you're sparking when you cost six for your way to turn on spark. Oh yeah. boy! Like how much power do you have? Yeah. Just uh, how about you spark by attacking with a five six? Oof. Yeah. Uh, next up is flame stoker, which oh, is a man. legendary relic. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, we got this big old horn. Yeah. It's a big tube in a, in, a, in a volcano that spits out five fives. Every turn. You just get okay. an infernus. Hooray. Mm -hmm. so Too bad your, your is... turn can't start multiple times. I think that would yeah. make this a lot better. That said, yeah. you could have multiple flame stokers equipped. You get multiple flame stokers. Hmm. I'm more interested in this card thinking about ways to use the infernus after it's charged and attacked, because these guys always die at the end of turn. Mm -hmm. Uh Oh, you can have a uh, brimstone altar to sacrifice them for extra damage. How, how long do you need to do that, though? Like your opponent's gonna fall over <laughs> dead pretty quickly to five I've, damage every turn, right? I I've, I've played Chalice, so no, not really, no. <laughs> I stay can we have for a very long yeah. time. Wait, 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 wait. Can we have the all relic deck where we just have Ooh. like this and Xenonobelisk? And if we, oh my, oh my god. god, if you have two flame stokers and Vault of the Praxis, then you also draw cards. <laughs> <laughs> draw more relics. <laughs> so that you can draw into your brimstone altar to, to multiples and. God. <laughs> clearly, form. clearly what you're supposed to do with this is play Infernus in your deck. So you have four Infernuses and four flame stokers. <laughs> Mm. I got one for free, and then I got an extra. Yeah, uh, you, you've played it, and then you can play the rogue quest, and you'll all your creatures will become five fives, which they already are because they're in furnace. Lord, yep. this is this is a cute legend. I don't know if it's any yeah. good, but it's. I it's yeah, I, I think it's. I also think it's cute and not necessarily good. That said, uh, yeah, your opponent may well just crumble to the pressure of a five five of a world charge. Coming in every turn. Man, and filling your graveyard with more... the infernuses. <laughs> that, that, that one's the high quality toot. That one's the like yeah. skeleton toot in HD. Yeah. <laughs> HD <laughs> skeleton toot. Yeah, that, that's that's a real thing. What I'm just what I'm, okay, why does the infernuses not be granted war cry if they're coming out of a giant warhorn? Mm. Well, because they want to use the existing card. True. They just want to create a card and put it on yeah. the <laughs> Doom toots as he pleases. <laughs> so Burning Glaive, huh? Huh. I thought for sure that this was a relic weapon. Wow. Yep, this nope. is a lava I'm, axe. I'm putting it down. Yeah, Goodbye, is, uh... Burning Glaive. Like, the only reason that this is here is so that uh, Caleb can add more power and toughness to a unit. That I'll accept that as the existence. At least that is a reason to exist rather than like some of the vanillas we'll be seeing later. Right? So if you ever if they ever print like a 15 power 1010 10 weapon, you'll know what it's for. <laughs> and it's for the same reason that it, Burning Glaive is here. Yeah. Put this on some sort of evasive creature if you're going to use it. God, that thing is embarrassing oh, I'll, I'll at Alternatively seven. don't use it. Yeah. Next up is Sindok <laughs> Rage Incarnate. <laughs> this card has potential, I want to say. Yeah, potential to die to lightning strike. I'm okay People, with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that because, like, I uh, what I see here is like a four mana seven four flyer. Yeah, like if it, okay. if it does, 
if you get this down for four if you get this down for four or five you're way under cost all right all right so the model is we uh we do the regular like aggressive red thing and use our mm -hmm. trumpet blast early and then p play this guy for like one yeah. or i'm is even seeing we're... this in like uh you just play this after playing your uh impending doom like in stone scar oh just hit him for five in the air yeah, with yeah just hit them with your yeah just hit them with your five yeah. five flyer and then... I guess that could be okay he kind of like needs you to be doing well though True. I, that's I that's guess, the kind of yeah. that's the funky part. Like I I I never was the hugest fan of Rakdos's uh both uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about a magic card. Uh Rakdos Lord, Lord of Riots. Yeah, Bernie was just talking about yeah, of of that sort of reduction because of that idea. You need to be like winning in order for uh you it to work or to be doing mm. good so if you're like if you're behind this cost nine oh god i guess yeah, exactly. that's why i immediately thought of this in stone scar because if you're behind in stone scar you're losing 80 percent of the time anyways <laughs> and maybe you get like a really lucky power you know, no i think i i think i like this guy more in uh in stone scar come to think because there are definitely times where i can set up a um a what's it Umbern Reaper, like, attack, and then sacrifice him. So you take 10, and this guy costs zero. <laughs> so this, and this card has potential. I don't know if it's super good or so not. So I think I'm going to evaluate him as a five-cost card. I think that's I think that's realistic. Seven and power so would I play... Lot. Yeah, would I play a five-power uh, five seven-four flying? And I think I would, actually. So like how cheap maybe does your maybe he's good. have to be. Hmm. Yeah, that's Trace that's the other thing. Like he, oh, he is he is oh. just cheap beef at that. Well, fine. Right. So like impending doom, more he's more like impending doom than he is like Umbern Reaper. Say, mm -hmm. yeah. But hmm. trades with uh, certain titans that will not be named. <laughs> Ah, sweet nine <laughs> costs just to, just to do it. Yeah. No, you pay four just like they do. <laughs> how how did you hit your opponent if you controlled that? Okay. Well, if that's they, uh, if they had the your umbern, your umbern reaper died. That's that's all the fire. Uh, that's all the mono fire cards. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop okay, streaming and okay. then start streaming again, and we'll continue with time. I don't think we're gonna get through all the cards. Oh, certainly not. There's a lot of cards. There's there's way too many cards. Um, but we'll be back.